Great and Big Joe show. Jay Michael may be joining us in just a moment. Uh, a lot of emails and tweets, and we'll continue to make sure you see the conversation. I tweeted out, what would your Pacers starting lineup look like? A lot of responses. Uh, I can't read any that has put Holiday in the starting lineup. You guys, come on. Yeah. I can't, I can't read any of those. Um, uh, however, but a lot of CJ in for Darren. Um, I don't know if that's knee jerk after what we saw last night or a reaction in totality to what we've seen from Darren in these first 12 games of this, uh, NBA season, but a lot of CJ for Darren and a lot of Domas in the starting lineup. Yeah. A lot of Domas in the starting lineup. Um, some with that, some with Miles at the four. And a lot of emails of folks saying that you need to put Miles at the stretch four spot because that's where he's more comfortable, Joe. Well, again, he helps you with the rebounding, which is key, and you need to get off to a, a better rebounding start. They're they're inconsistent that way. Now, last night what was it uh, forty two each, so it ended up being even. But the second chance points, and 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 that's the thing. Last night there were so many, especially early on, there were so many baskets. That, uh, that were so easy just getting right to the rim. And, and that's where Miles should be at his best in protecting the rim. He had a couple of blocks, but you know, it, it, I think it's got to start defensively. They, they were just out to lunch defensively yeah. when we, they just didn't get going at all. They were like, you know, we talked about flat footed. I mean, that, that is exactly the way it was. And, uh, so I, I don't, again, I don't want to put it on one guy because there were a lot of guys that were bad. You know, Tyreek wasn't very good bad and, and, and we heard from kevin bowen you know he's still battling some bronchitis or whatever so maybe that was part of it uh Bojan just defensively no uh and the only shots he's been hitting or been uncontested ones doug mcdermott hasn't where is doug mcdermott i mean we we haven't seen anything from him yet so trying to get him worked out and uh yeah and that's on that's on other guys on the court that's not just on right exactly that's not just on him he has to hit what's on him is when he does get a look he's got to knock it down like that's on him right but Tyreek and others have to have to and the coaching staff they have to set Doug up right and this isn't knee this isn't you know knee jerk reaction or anything like this and this isn't you know panic situation or anything because I tell you what we we saw when they went to San Antonio that's as good a game as I've seen in a long long time complete game and it and they're capable of it so it's the ups and downs of it maybe a little bit has to do with the bronchitis and whatnot but a, a, a lot of it has to do to me with number thirty three and I thought it, I maybe maybe he didn't see it the same way. But if Miles doesn't see it the same way, I had it built up in my mind that here's an opportunity for you in your fourth year to go against one of the best in the league. That's roughly your size, roughly your you know, definitely your same position, roughly the same. You know, you're on the same level in a lot of ways as far as your age, experience, and those kinds of things. And he, it, but they're so far apart. It was so glaring how far apart the two of them are. As far as where their development is, and and one of them has an aggressive, uh, killer kind of an attitude, and the other one doesn't, and and that's something that Miles is going to have to develop is the killer attitude, and I think it really does come down to that. So, like like you said, I mean, you can hang upside down all you want, do your yoga and all that kind of thing, but at some point there needs to, it's it's got to go between the ears, and it's just got to be a toughness thing, and when you see it a yeah. lot. When you see it from guys like Vic, when you see it from Domas, when you see these guys that are out there and toughing, toughening up and, you know, doing the dirty work kind of stuff, at some point, I, I just, I don't know why it doesn't transfer onto you. I think that's one of the great things about those two guys in, specifically. They bring with them a work ethic that is, that it's contagious. So why is. is it not, why is it not, you know, stretching to everybody? And, and in particular, that's Miles. A- uh, let's, let's get in, let's get, is it Brian or Brandon, Brandon on line one. Let's get Brandon in, chiming in on the Pacers and Miles. What's going on, Brandon? Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing? Good, man. So I was going to get your opinion on this. So do you think that at some point Miles should just 100% commit to his finesse game? Because, I mean, if you're working on the post game, that's good and great. But all that time you're spending doing that, you're taking away from possibly mastering the craft of your finesse game. If that's the kind of player he truly is. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's what they're going to have to do because, um, Sabonis can fill the void as far as being, um, physical out there with the bigger centers. And we say, Oh, there's not as many, you know, there's not that many great centers in the league, but 
you, you got three games in a row now. Um, you had Clint Capella, who's a problem. You had Joel Embiid, who's a problem. And then you have Hassan Whiteside coming up tomorrow, who's a problem. And so those that's three games in a row. That's three games in a row where you have physical guys. So um, Sabonis in there would offset that. You can set the physical tone that you'd like to. And then Miles doesn't have to do that as much anymore. You still want to encourage him to do it. You still definitely want to encourage him to do it. But um, I'm at a point now where it's like, no, you, this is, okay, all right. So you're going to roam defensively. You got to be all over the place defensively. Sabonis is going to do dirty work and block out bigs. And so your rebound total should go up since you're not exerting energy in that fashion. And then, yeah, you focus on, you focus on your J slashing, setting good screens, all that other stuff as opposed to, you know, trying to battle, trying to battle inside. Not saying give it up completely, but Joe, fourth year, four, that's an elder statesman in today's NBA. Yes, it is. I, 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 sometimes we can, we're, we're like, we're confusing age with basketball years. It's like, you know, so I, you have to look at basketball years like dog years, right? So, you know, Tino's four years old, but what is Tino, 28? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like 28, you know? I mean, he should be paying bills now. He should be, you know? So in the NBA, you know, fourth year in the league, there there can't be this talk like, man, I wonder if he's, you know, man, if he's, man, he could still do this, he could still do that. I I don't I don't necessarily feel that way. I think you've been in the league this long. If you don't if you don't show it this season, then I don't I don't see any explosion. I don't see any explosion coming. Yeah, I don't I don't know when when that happens for guys. I just know four years is you know you four years and you you see it a lot in the trade deadline in football. There were a lot of 2016 draft picks. You know they're gone. So that's three years. You know two and two and a couple, couple of games. So there were a lot of guys that you know. It, so I don't know if the sport's a little different. Obviously, how young he was when he came in, and with his size, you know, trying to grow into that body and everything. But yeah, I don't. I don't know how long. How long you stay with that? Yeah, let's get in. Let's get in a guy, Jay Michael, Indy Star. Jay Michael. Um, I, I know it's we're only twelve games into the season, but if you could put out a starting lineup right now, if you were to put together the starting lineup for the Pacers, what's your starting five? I mean, well, based on how they're playing right now, I mean, you'd have Sabonis at the five. Um, I would seriously consider finding a way to get um, Evans to play with Oladipo as much as possible. Um, mm. So. If you know, I, I just I, I don't think it's a I don't think it's a I don't think it's a talent thing. I just think it's a finding the right combinations. And um, you know, you know, Collison had played really well for some you know stretchy games, but you know last night he was pretty ineffective and you know not able and willing to shoot or able to penetrate, get in the lane. So I think you have some issues there. At least last night you did, and that that props up with him occasionally. And of course, you know with Miles Turner, it's He's a he's a really bad matchup for Joel and B number one, and um, and he got off on the wrong foot, and you know things just kind of went downhill. But you know clearly, so is is had the better season than the better better guy uh, so far. Um, but you know Sabonis isn't making didn't sign eighty in the contract, so that always put coaches in a tough position because they generally you know, things because they generally try to go with the guy who's you know. They have more invested in, you know, prove his, prove his so how, how long do you stick with? You know, I don't know. It's, uh, you know, I, I think the, whole, the, the operator I saw season coming in is Turner should be able to stretch better than Sabonis, which he should be a better stretch option, but you haven't seen that from him either. So I think that's what been swings the pendulum heavily in favor of Sabonis if Turner is not going to be able to stretch the floor for him. Jim Michael, you said that uh, you know there, there, there's no match Miles and and, and Embiid. Um, my question is, I guess should there sh- shouldn't there be after four years? Shouldn't they those two be closer in, in talent and ability and that kind of thing? Or, or are we just trying with Miles to take that square peg and put him in a round hole? I think I think it's the latter part what you're talking. It's a round hole. Um, you know, I said this in the off season too. I, I wrote a piece on Miles where. You know, we're talking about, well, you know, he's, he's all these workout videos and he's stronger and all that other stuff. It's like that all looks great, but there are plenty of guys who supposedly got physically better in the offseason and 
it did, you know, they all of a sudden didn't turn into physical players. I think part of that is the mentality as well. And, um, you know, it's skill wise, she should be able to match up with Embiid in the sense that as much as Embiid gives it to him, he should have been able to give it back to him or whoever was guarding him on the other end of the floor. And he wasn't. So if Embiid's bullying you in the post and he's got that edge on you, you know, it would have been nice to see Miles be able to, you know, spread him out, beat him off the dribble, get to the rim and dunk on him, that kind of thing. So, you know, you go tit for tat. Like, and so, you know, I think their strengths and weaknesses are different. But um, Embiid was a better player down low. He was a better player when he matched up a cop. He was a better player without the ball. He was a better player with the ball. So it's, you know, I just, you know, Miles just has a long way to go. It's, it's not about, um, you know, I, I, I shed bad body fat and got stronger in the off season and I feel stronger, which is all great. Uh, it's just like, you know, it has to translate between the ears and with your will. And he didn't, he, he just didn't have a good game last night. And at the same time, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not going to kill him and say, you know, all of a sudden Miles Turner just throw him on a scrap heap. It's just that he's got a long ways to go. He's not all of a sudden going to be an all star this year just because he had a great off season. I think he's still a work in progress. If he ever gets there, it's going to take, it's going to take a couple of years. I don't, I just can't imagine all of these things are going to fall into place in one year because. You know, he has a lot of things to work on and to fix and be better at. And I think maybe it's unrealistic to think he's going to fix everything at once. And that's the frustrating part. And the fact that, you know, they gave him the money in the offseason. The scrutiny is going to go up from a from a uh, fan and a public perception standpoint. But this is fourth fourth year in the league. I mean, that's a long time to yeah. be in the league. And he still doesn't have a go-to, a go-to move or something that he can rely on. And as we mentioned to start, I mentioned this to start the show. Um, I mean, they, they were putting Ben Simmons on him. Yeah. And it wasn't just, it wasn't just the disrespect there that, that Brett Brown put Simmons on him. It's the fact that Miles had three points until the midway point of the fourth quarter. He wasn't able to take advantage. And you know, J. Michael, you watch guys, you, you put a smaller guy on a guy or a guy who doesn't have quick feet. You know, if you're a, if you're a, a point guard or a wing player and there's a guy defending you who doesn't have quick feet, or if you're a big and you have a smaller guy on you, that's, you gobble him up as often as you can. And yeah, yeah. Philly not only felt comfortable putting Simmons on him, but Miles couldn't take advantage. And that's a and problem you know, I, in year four. Know, you know, I, you know what I think he was even worse time, even in the Simmons matchup? They had Robert Covington on him. And when he tried to do that drop step and turn around, I don't know if you remember what happened. He got stuffed by a six foot nine forward who is half of Miles Turner's side. Robert Covington is not going to be confused. It's some physical marvel. Uh, um, you know, he, he's a good defensive <laughs> well. He's a really good defensive player. But you should be able to, 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 to if, if, you're, if you're being defended in the post by Covington, you should be able to back him down in the post and get your shot, not try a drop step, fall away jump shot, and get it blocked, which is what happened. Can't, it cannot. It cannot happen. Let me ask you again on the uh, the point guard, the point guard situation, and how would yeah. you? Because um, there's a couple schools of thought on that. I know you mentioned seeing Tyreek and and. Um, uh, Vic on the floor together more, so that would be an, an option perhaps in the starting lineup, or maybe you can get Tyreek engaged early right from the get-go. Uh, fans have yeah. thrown out Corey Joseph in there. Very few are saying yeah. keep Darren Collison in that spot. And you could also make a trade at some point to bring in, to bring yeah. in a point guard. So the point guard yeah. spot is crucial, Jay. What do you see there? Yeah, it is crucial. I mean, he has a catch-22 there in though. Like, Corey Joseph, like, to me, Corey, when he pushes the ball, especially you get in transition – He's really good at finding guys spotting up for three. And I just think overall as a team, they're not good at doing that transition, getting that, that sniper three. And I think Corey's really good at setting guys up. He's really good defensively. Um, Darren's good defensively too, but Corey's really good defensively as well. You know, Corey's Achilles is, you know, his shooting and shot selection at times. And he started out the season shooting really well. Um, and then, you know, lately he hasn't shot the ball well either. So they have guys who are good at a lot of things. Um, maybe not great enough at some things that they need to be, you know what I mean? Like, and, 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 and the reason why I mentioned Tariq um, is even though he's had his issues pounding the ball too much, I think he's been better defensively than I expected. Uh, you know, his shot selection at times isn't great, but I could live with some of that. Uh, you know, you have to score to be able to win in the league, and who scores better at the point guard position that they have on that roster than Evans right now?
and Jay Michael. And can, oh, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and you can switch them. You can you can have Oladipo run offense. You can have mm-hmm. Tariq run offense. It's not like he's got to run exclusively. So you know, I just think that versatility is, it could give you more options. That's all. It's just a hunch of mine. Really good stuff. We'll see how they look against the Miami Heat. Another tough test for Miles Turner in that starting lineup against Hassan Whiteside, who had, I think, 29, 20, and 9 last <laughs> night. Uh, so another tough test for Miles. Jay Michael, yeah. I appreciate it as always, brother. Thanks so much. We will holler at you soon, my man. All right, now, anytime. Appreciate it. Pre- appreciate it. That's Jay Michael there on the Payless Liquors Hotline. Uh, pop quiz coming up next. 239-1070 is our number. 239-1070. Pop quiz after this timeout. Scotty J put it together. And, uh, look, if you go, if you go five for five, we, um, we were saving this for tomorrow, but five for five, we have to hook you up with tomorrow's prize today. And that's Colts Jaguars tickets. 239-1070 is our number. 239-1070. We are back after this here on the fan.